What does the future hold for the population of the Durham region? Well, I'm going to share with you guys here a link from germ.ca, and I love what I see in regards to population growth. So when we're looking from 2016, there was about 673,000 people spread across the entire Durham region, and the population expected to grow to over 1.2 million by 2041. So anytime that we're seeing a population double in about 20 years, that's going to be something that I'm going to be aggressively paying attention to. What is up YouTube, Matt McKeever here, and in today's video, we're gonna be talking about Oshawa and the Durham region when it comes to real estate investing. And so the first thing I think we need to do is really just dive into what does the Durham region all encompass? If you guys didn't know, I'm from London, Ontario, so Durham's kind of the other end of the world as far as I'm concerned, because it's on the far side of Toronto. But when we're talking about Durham, it often just gets associated with just being Oshawa, but there's actually a much bigger area in the Durham region than you might realize. Let's pull up the map here on Google Maps. We can quickly see here just the outline. And in fact, there's a lot of different regions included. We're primarily going to be focusing though on this corridor between the 401 and the 407 right here, which includes markets like Pickering, Ajax, Whitby, and Oshawa. And again, to me, before I started really researching these markets, I didn't know much about the area other than Oshawa and Whitby in general. But if we jump over here to the uh, germ.ca website, here's a great little graph that's going to break down for us all, all the major regional centers um, in regards to total population by year for the Durham region uh, municipality. So we've got, uh, you know, essentially at the bottom here, we've got Brock, Uxbridge, and uh, Skugog. Is that actually a name? Well, anyways, we can see that neither of these or none of these three cities are really growing dramatically. If you had to pick one, it looks like Uxbridge is the only one really growing because we can see it started down here back in 1989 around uh, the size that Brock was, but slowly worked its way up to take over Skukog which has pretty much stayed the same throughout. So first things first, if I was looking at areas in the Durham region to invest in, those would probably be near the bottom of my list just because I love markets that are dramatically growing. And the reason I like markets that population base is dramatically growing is one, it's a strong indicator that there could be more demand in the future for this area as well. Just with natural growth, we naturally see price appreciation as the city continues to grow and people start to prioritize living close to the downtown core or whatever the desirable area is in that local city. Now, outside of that though, we've also got markets like Clarington, Oshawa, Whitby, Ajax, and Pickering. And so we can see Oshawa by far is the largest uh, population market here. And you know, it's trending up towards 180,000 in its total CMA. So that's the census metropolitan area. Um, but beyond that, we can see that both Whitby is growing dramatically. In fact, it's gone from 60,000 to over 120,000 over what? This is the last 30 years. That's a great indicator. If you see a city uh, doubling population in a 20 to 30 year time horizon, that's often a great indicator that that's a market you want to get into. We can say, see similarly here with Ajax again, where it went from about 50,000 all the way up to just over 120,000 for population. Um, Pickering has a lot more of a flat growth rate ever since we kind of peaked here in 2001. And we can see that Clarington though is steadily growing as well, but is a much smaller city, but again, 40,000 to about 80,000, which is a double over those last 30 years. So again, these are all great indicators. And for me, one of the first things I want to know about a city is, is, is its population growing or dying or just staying stagnant. For me, I only want to be investing in markets where the population is aggressively growing. If you didn't know, throughout, um, I believe from 2020 to 2041 or 2046, the province of Ontario is projecting an average growth rate of 1% um, per year per city. But again, this can vary dramatically. And this is why we want to get dialed in as an investor to our local data. All right, now that we've discussed some of the regions in Durham, let's look at what's going on as far as sales is concerned in the Durham region. So what I've got up here is the CREA, that's the Canadian Real Estate Association's uh, statistical data uh, through September 2020. And first thing we can see is there was a huge spike in September 2020 in regards to sales. In fact, it, it blew past the 10 year average. Um, moving past that though, we can see residential new listings, again, going strong over the last four years here in the Durham region. But when we're looking at residential active listings for September only, 
we can see that again, um, similar to a lot of other growing Canadian cities and regions, um, it hit near a low. In fact, the only time it's been lower in the last 10 years was 2016. And so again, if we see that supply is limited, usually that's going to put pressure on um, pricing, which is going to cause the pricing to continue to increase for that region. I'm um, looking at residential months of inventory on hand. Again, we're actually lower than 2016 um, in 2020. So again, that's a very strong indicator that uh, demand is going to be outstripping supply, which should put pressure on pricing. And then finally, when we look at actually the price charts, remember how I mentioned back in 2016, we saw that huge spike um, through 2016, 2017. Well, again, the charts are looking very familiar here in 2020 in regards to the Durham region as well. Now, one thing to note, unlike markets like Brantford or London, Ontario, it didn't kind of plateau after that 2017 spike. In fact, it fell dramatically in the Oshawa Durham region. Um, so that is something you're going to want to look out for as an investor. This region has been prone to more ups and downs than say a more steady market like a London or a Brantford, which we've documented and discussed previously on my channel. All right, now let's look at the real estate market and break it down by a specific market or a city in the Durham region. And now shout out to the realtor, John Owen. I've never met you before, but your website actually has some really useful data. Um, so I definitely appreciate that. And uh, if anyone wants to uh, go check it out, we'll throw a link to all the websites we discussed in the video description down below. But here's the Durham real estate prices. Um, from September 2019 to September 2020. And again, I wish that I could have found data going back, you know, 10 years, but at least this is a nice little indicator so we can see what's going on in those different markets. As well, the top one here in red, this is actually TREB, so that's the Toronto Real Estate Board. But what we're really interested in is what's going on in Durham, Oshawa, Whitby, Clarington, Ajax, and Pickering. And so again, we can see Pickering's got a lot of demand. Um, prices have stayed pretty stable over the last couple of months, but you know, it's starting to hit up against that 850 uh, price range. Whereas when we look at a market more like uh, Whitby or Ajax, again, they're a bit uh, more affordable in that 750 to 800 range. Um, in the Durham region overall, you know, we're looking at just below 750 in pricing. And then Clarington, we see a lot of demand there in regards to where the price point's at. And Oshawa, again, the major city for the region, we can see a solid trend since April all the way to September. And that's something that really is a consistent pattern here. Um, and this is something to expect in any city with real demand and growth. Um, because again, whether you're looking at London, Brantford, um, Toronto, Windsor, most of these markets have really rebounded well since April 2020. And a reminder, if somehow you forgot what was going on in late March 2020 or April 2020, it was the end of the world as we know it because of COVID-19. People didn't know whether they were coming or going, whether it was the end time. So it really froze real estate. And in fact, certain uh, realtor regions, certain local realtor boards actually froze sales, meaning you literally just couldn't even sell real estate and others really put a damper because there was showing restrictions or limitations and things of that regards. But as of the summer of 2020, we really started seeing the markets open up again and some of that pent up demand that wasn't satisfied or fulfilled in early 2020 now is being satisfied and fulfilled in the second half and near the end of 2020. Otherwise, here's just a nice little snapshot of what you can expect as far as average price by municipality in the Durham region. So we can see Uxbridge is actually the most expensive, Pickering, then Whitby, uh, Scugog, Ajax, Durham region, Clarington, Oshawa, and Brock. Um, so again, just a nice little snapshot there. And if you're just kind of curious on where these are located, um, again, uh, this John Owen's got a pretty decent breakdown here on his uh, website. So I'll throw a link in the video description down below and you guys can all check it out. But what I really love is all the deep data he provides here on the local uh, Durham markets. So again, whether we're looking at the sales volume, active listings, days on markets, and again, this is just great data for a real estate investor. Really encourage you guys to check it out because I found it to be a wealth of information. Now let's move on from looking at the real estate data and just talking about the markets in general and really dial into what's going on in regards to major employers for the Oshawa area. 
So I found this a great website, oshawa.ca. I really appreciate the data they provided here. There's one little weird thing that we'll get to in a second, but first let's focus on the good data they've got on this website. So we can see that the Ontario Ministry of Finance is by far one of the larger employers when it comes to major public employers. So over 2,700 uh, employees at the Ontario Ministry of Finance. Then we've got uh, Lake Ridge Health Oshawa with over 2,300. The University of Ontario Institute of Technology with 1,700. Durham College with 1,700. Durham Catholic District School Board with 1,700. And then we get into some smaller uh, regional players such as Police Services, the City of Oshawa, the Region and of Durham, and Service Canada. But then if we move on to major private employers, we've got General Motors. Now, if you knew anything about Oshawa and Durham region, you probably immediately thought of General Motors. And part of the reason for that is, is they've got over 4,000 employees currently. And that by far makes them, you know, just like leaps and bounds ahead of any other major employer in that area. A reminder, the Ministry of Finance was 2,700, making it the second largest employer in the region. But when we're looking at private employers, the next biggest one is going to be Concentrix with a uh, thousand people and then AGS Automotive with 287. So we can see it dramatically drops once you move past General Motors. So again, that's why Oshawa in the Durham region is often thought of as an auto ma manufacturing uh, area, why it's thought of as kind of a rust belt city is because you've got so much employment going on from General Motors. So oftentimes as General Motors is going, also the city of Oshawa goes. Um, but one thing that I just found weird about the city website, I'm just gonna point out is they've got the military bases, but none of these military bases are even close to Oshawa. So like literally the closest military base is 112 kilometers. I have no idea why it would matter the number of people that live there. Is this just in case we get invaded from the United States and War of 1812 breaks out again? Because I don't know, it just seemed really strange. If you work for the city of Oshawa, let me know why anyone would care about this. Um, Cause like if I live in Oshawa, what does a military base in North Bay have to do with anything? Or what does the National Defense Headquarters, which is located in Ottawa, have to do with anything? Like these are literally over 300 kilometers away from the city. I have no idea why you include it on your city website. Um, but the rest of the information is really valid and really applicable for us as, re uh, as uh, our research as a real estate investor. Now let's jump and talk towards education and what's going on in the Oshawa area. So Oshawa is actually home to over 25,000 full-time students and that's going to be primarily made up of Durham College, Trent University Durham, and the University of Ontario Institute of Technology. Um, Oshawa is a community teaching site uh, for Queen's University School of Medicine as well at the Lake Ridge Health uh, Facilities. So again, you've got a lot of students, a lot of young people being drawn into the Oshawa and Durham region because of the large uh, post-secondary institutions there. Again, I love seeing that here in London, Ontario. That's a major factor for our city with the University of Western and Fanshawe College. So again, great to see that Oshawa's also got that, uh, that kind of sector going on in regards to both its employment as well as population base. Now, talking about the employment picture overall for all of Durham, I really struggled to find, you know, accurate recent data. So the closest thing I could find, unfortunately, was from 2014 from the germregion.com website. And so on there, we can see for the entire region that the Ontario Power Generation is by far the largest employer with 6,000. Then the District Board of Education with uh, 5,800. Then the Regional Municipality of Durham with 5,600. And then General Motors. So again, doesn't matter whether we're looking at the city of Oshawa or we're looking at the entire Durham region from a private employer perspective, really General Motors is a massive impact. Beyond that, we've really got, you know, the local governments, the local education board, and then the Ontario, and then the Ontario power generation as well. But what does the future hold for the population of the Durham region? Well, I'm going to share with you guys here a link from germ.ca, and I love what I see in regards to population growth. So when we're looking from 2016, there was about 673,000 people spread across the entire Durham region, and the population expected to grow to over 1.2 million by 2041. So anytime that we're seeing a population double in about 20 years, that's gonna be something that I'm going to be aggressively paying attention to. And that's actually better than a market like Brantford, which we've talked about in the past, which is expected to grow by 60% over the next uh, 20 years, 
Oshawa and Durham region is expected to grow by literally double over the next 20 years. That's huge. That's a very strong indicator that you're going to continuously see demand grow as well as we see the GTA continue to push further east. Again, the entire Durham region is really well positioned to take advantage of that growth and that demand. So again, from that uh, demographic factor, I really love what I see going on in the Durham region. And then finally, before we wrap up, when we're talking about the Durham region, you know, we can't not mention what's going on with Amazon. So in 2020, Amazon announced a huge project going on in Ajax, which is one of the cities in the Durham region, which is expected to create over a thousand jobs. Again, we already saw that, you know, uh, the largest private employer by far in that region is going to be GM. Well, the fact that Amazon's moving in and bringing a thousand jobs, that's a really strong indicator. And it's great to see that from a diversification standpoint when it comes to the employment sector as well for the Oshawa and Durham region. So again, that's a huge thing that you don't want to overlook when you're looking at potentially investing in the Durham region or especially Ajax specifically. So that's the Durham region and Oshawa specifically as a quick synopsis in regards to what's going on in the real estate market. I think it's really well positioned to grow throughout the coming years as well. It's great to see that COVID-19 didn't have a dramatically negative impact on the local market as well. So again, I love what I see going on and that population growth is just, that's really gonna be one of the things that would draw me towards a market like Oshawa. Now, when we're looking at the average price point in Oshawa, one thing you will have to consider is what is the investment strategy you're looking at implementing? These days, as we continue to see demand outstrip supply in the Durham region, we're naturally gonna see prices continue to increase. And that's gonna make it more and more difficult for you as an investor if you're seeking cash flow. However, as we continue to see prices rise, that can be a great thing for someone that's wholesaling real estate or looking at flipping real estate. So those are two models that I specifically would be drawn towards in the Oshawa Durham region over the coming years to take advantage as we continue to see prices increase. Otherwise, if you can find cash flowing properties, they seem like a natural fit for any portfolio because presumably you're going to benefit from a lot of appreciation as well because like we mentioned earlier, the population is going to double in the next 20 years. All right, that's it for the Durham region and Oshawa real estate markets. I'm, I'm really fascinated by these markets. I know there's a ton of Ontario investors that are doing great things out there. We've had guys like Ryan Carr on the YouTube channel in the past. He's doing lots of duplex conversions and flips out in the uh, Oshawa and Durham, Whitby region. So again, I love getting to learn more about local Ontario real estate markets. If you guys would like me to deep dive into another local Ontario real estate market, let me know what market should I cover in the next YouTube video by commenting the video description down below. Otherwise, are you currently investing in the Durham region? What cities, what strategies, and what are the results you're getting? Let us know in that comment section down below because I know I'd love to hear from you, but as well, your fellow audience members are constantly looking for your perspective as boots on the ground investors. So please share your experiences in the comment section down below. Smash the like button if you got value from this video and hit the subscribe button if you're new to my channel because if you didn't know, less than 50% of you that watch my YouTube channel are actually subscribed to my channel. And well, one, it hurts my feelings. Two, I really want to get that silver play button. So if you didn't know, when you get to 100,000 subscribers on YouTube, they will mail the content creator this this little silver plaque that's a play button. It's just an ego thing, but my ego would really appreciate it if you guys would hit the subscribe button. Otherwise, I hope you guys got value from this video. Share your experiences as an investor in this region and let me know what regions should I cover in future videos.